right, this is first grade, module three, lesson 12. We're gonna continue talking about statistics and data and organizing our data. And in this case, students are, are not going to be creating the data themselves as they did in previous lessons. This time, they're gonna be given a data set and they're gonna be asked to organize that data into um, using essentially like pictographs or bar, gra bar graphs is what it's gonna end up looking like. And then they're gonna be asked to answer some questions. All right, so let's get going on this. So parents and teachers, from a teaching point of view, how do you introduce this with your students? Well, one way is, you know, ki kids inherently want to talk about themselves, and they're always wanting to share their information, their thoughts. So one idea could be to conduct a survey. So parents, and, oh, a teacher specifically, you know, you know your kids better than any curriculum, any publisher like Eureka Math. So what I'd love for you to do is customize your survey that you ask your kids to really meet the needs of your kids. So I'm going to ask a lame one, like, what's your favorite fruit? Apple? Uh, banana? Or um, peach? All right, so there is our, our survey. Now, that's kind of a cheesy survey. That's not a good one at all. So please come up with something better than what I just did. But then the idea could be, um, ask a kid who chose apple as their favorite fruit. And so when a student raises his hand, you know, have that student place a post-it note with his name right there. All right. Ask for a student who said banana. And you say, okay, well, you come on up here and have your student uh, put that post-it note right there, and then finally ask for a student who said, yes, that peach was their favorite. So now you've got it, and basically what we're doing here is I'm making sure that I've lined up my end points. Just like in our measurement section of this module, I'm lining up our end points. We're using common units so that we're consistent here, and then we're going to line them up. And so Ask, did, ask your class, did another, is there another student who chose apple as their favorite fruit? And when you find that student, you give that student a post-it and then show that student how to line up their post-it so that there's no gaps and there's no overlap. And then as you, at some point, once you've kind of modeled what it should look like, have your students in some sort of organized way come on up and bring their post-it notes and essentially vote for their favorite kind of fruit. And at some point, you're going to have something that looks like, oh, I'll do, just do a little bit more here, one here, one here, one here, and then, oh, let's just do one more right there. Good. And then now you're good. Now, at this point, you could say some, a whole bunch of kinds of leading questions. One question was, how many people chose Apple? And, of course, you want your students to say four. How many students chose Peach? Oh, and we want them to say three. How many chose Banana? Ooh, that's a little bit more difficult. So it might require some counting, careful counting. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, now what they could have done is said, well, if this is Apple and Apple is four, we could have kind of gone over here and see that, oh, banana is two more, so four plus two is six, so banana would be six. Another question we could ask is how many people voted all together, in which case we might either count all the individual post-its or our students might add four plus six plus three. We could ask other questions like, how many more people chose banana than apple? And now the students are going to be saying, hmm, what's the difference between banana and apple? So there's a whole lot of kind, the kinds of questions that you as the teacher could ask your students so that they can look at this chart, what I think of this as a pictograph, and um, they could be answering questions based on this collected data. And that's the idea of this. So here, a little less fun, uh, but the students are given the data, and they're, they're going to draw in their little squares here. So it says the class has 18 students, so we need 18 squares. And on Friday, nine students wore sneakers, six wore sandals, and three wore boots. Use squares with no gaps or overlaps to organize your data. All right, so let's get working on that. 
So through the wonder of technology, I have just created a bunch of little squares here. And we're told that nine students wore sneakers. So we need to arrange for nine of our... Now, ideally, maybe we could put it right on, the, on that line. It doesn't have to be that way. But I just did, because why not? And so that's four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So there's my nine who chose sneakers. And then we can see that, let's see, six wore sandals. So I'm going to move over six. And I'm going to try and, uh, I always have to line up the endpoints, right? That's where it says line up your squares carefully. And that makes a uh, comparison later much easier. And so I'm going to do three, four, five, six. All right. And then it says three wore boots. So let's see. I Hopefully I have three here. One, two, three. There we go. So I've correctly created my graph. And now, the whole point of this is that we can answer a bunch of questions about this, right? So, uh, one question might be, how many more students wore sneakers than sandals? So, you've got the sneakers here, you've got your, s wait, sneakers and sandals right here. So, the question is, how many more chose sneakers? Well, we can see that they're even up to here. And so the difference is these three right here. So the answer could be, or is, three. Now the question would be, write a number sentence to tell how many students were asked about their shoes. So we know we have nine here, six here, and three here. So a number sentence could be nine plus six plus three. All right, and if we wanted to, we could go ahead and give the answer, which is equals 18. So you get the idea. In fact, let's just wrap up this last question. Write a number sentence to show how many fewer students wore boots than sneakers. So we have a couple of choices, don't we? One choice we could do 9 minus 3 is a, a number sentence, which equals 6. So that's one way we could do it. Or we can use it as an addition problem with a missing add end. We could say 3 plus what? equals 9, and of course the answer would be 6. So we have some choices here, don't we? And so give your students a chance to think about those choices. Really quick one. <clears throat> it says our school garden has been growing for two months. The graph below shows the number of each vegetable that have been harvested so far. So we can see that we have four beets, we have, oh my goodness, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carrots, and we have three corn. And then based on that, we can now answer a whole variety of questions. Now the important thing is, parents and teachers, as you'll notice I wrote the numbers. We don't necessarily need the students to answer these questions based on the numbers. Ideally, we want them to be answering the question, based on what they see down here, although they can certainly use these numbers if they uh, are up to doing that, right? So how many total vegetables were harvested? We can count and we can add them up. Which vegetable has been harvested the most? Clearly carrots. So the idea is let's use these bars to answer the questions, but if students want, they're certainly welcome to use the numbers as well. And that wraps up first grade, module three, lesson 12, answering a bunch of questions based on a collected data set.